Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with the first gameplay of our 40k zombies rule set. Um, I'm just going to show you a small snippet of gameplay that I'm going to record on my own to show you how the game will function. It's not going to be very long, it's only going to be maybe one or two waves of zombies so as you can get a grasp of how the game is played, not a full battle report. We're still working on refining the rule set to make that possible but what I'm going to show you is a basic mechanical breakdown of the game for maybe one or two maybe three waves depending I'll make it a very simple map I'll show you how I'd set it up I'll set up survivors I'll set up the zombies and I will play it on my own because you can play this game between on your own or with four friends um, controlling the survivors if you wish to play as zombies or with one person yeah you get the idea so I'm just going to show you the survivor models, um, I'll just use normal guardsmen to represent the zombies and then I'm going to set a map up and we're going to have a look at how 40k zombies is played. So if you are excited, as excited for this as I am, be sure to give the video a like rating and to share it in as many places as possible because I am really hyped for doing this and I really want to show you how our game works. So without further ado, let's have a look at the survivors that I've made. So here we have the survivor team camera focus thank you so three of them are mounted on custom bases from the shop in Barnsley one of them is not because I haven't actually converted this model yet but let's just have a look through they're all gonna be equipped exactly the same but I just wanted to show you them so you know who you're following on the tabletop so we have this guy with the camera please the sword and the last pistol on the pavement and they're all armed basically with las pistols and of course combat weapons in the game and this is one of the representations of that. I just wanted to show you this base because they come from the local shop in Barnsley. I've painted them up, admittedly quite badly. And you might see a few of these types of bases dotted around on my army in future. This is his next guy. He is a grizzled sergeant of the Planetary Defence Force armed again with a las pistol but this one is taken from the Tempestus kit, a chainsword and the buried head. Um, he was a sergeant with a grenade at first, but I've converted him and kitbashed him. I'm quite happy with it. This guy you will of course recognise. He is my commissar. He is basically just a commissar, but he's going to have the same stat line as all the other survivors, which I'm going to go through in a moment. And then we have my Talarn sergeant model from, or at least the uh, torso and head are Talarn resin. The other parts are, well, not, which is why it looks a little bit weird, and it's why I haven't got around to painting him, because I just haven't. But he makes a good representation. So these guys represent the four um, survivors from, actually from Call of Duty Zombies, so Takio, Dempsey, Rick Toffin, and Nikolai, very, very loosely anyway. But all survivors are weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 4, strength and toughness 3, with 2 wounds, initiative 3, 1 attack, leadership 9, and a 4 plus save. They have move through cover, um, a las pistol and cross combat weapon, um, carapace armor obviously and two frag grenades. Um, I've also given them two special rules unique to 40k zombies. Uh, one of them is called evade which means that it's basically hit and run but instead of um, consolidate running away 3d6 you simply consolidate d6 inches if you pass your initiative test to break out of combat the zombies do not take an initiative test to stop you you just have to take an initiative test and now this is not an actual rule that affects anything but it, i call it zench's plaything because uh, the law for 40k zombies is zench versus nurgle is the whole idea and it basically ex helps me to explain why the survivors are much tougher and able to carry more weapons than normal humans would be able to do and it also explains why they can be revived and why they respawn after, if they die out at the start of the next round and it also explains why they're more capable of dealing with a zombie infection the mystery box and all the other things that um, appear in 40k zombies so with that said um, let's set up a board so we have set up a board and we are ready to go. So the zombie player, in this case me, because I'm playing the game on my own, will set the board up and they need to set up a series of rooms for the survivors to move through and then place various items within those rooms. So you have a spawn room where your, where your survivors will start um, and then as many of these sort of normal middle rooms as I'm going to term them and then an end room which at the moment in this current set of the rules contains the power. Um, 
Now you might be thinking, hang on, how am I supposed to get through from here to there to turn on that power switch? Well, that's because this debris here and this debris here are both viable. So if I score enough points, I can move one of my survivors to the thing, pay the points and move it out of the way off the board. And then my survivors are free to come and go through here as they wish. For the moment, I can't do that. So that's why that's there. Uh, you also need to set up the mystery box. This is, in this game at any rate, where all of my weapons will be coming from. There are war weapon buys in the game. I will actually put a link in the description to the thread on Battle of Souls where I posted the rules. So if you need any clarification on what I'm talking about, go and read that. And you will actually be able to read the rules for yourself and understand me a little better. So the mystery box is my source of weapons. Um, I will roll a 3d6 and pay a points cost to use it, and that weapon I am then stuck with. I can choose to leave it, but I basically will be picking every weapon I get out of that box. I'm hoping to get the wonder weapons out of doing this. So let's have a look. We'll see what we get. Um, I've also designated two perks and the power. So the power is this artillery dice, and you'll notice there is one artillery dice with a with the misfire symbol displayed. When my survivors um, move into range of the power, I will place a second artillery dice either next to or on it, designating that I have turned the power on. Now once the power is on, I can then buy perks as per Call of Duty Zombies, which is what the whole basis of this game actually is. So this perk here is Stamina Up, and Stamina Up gives plus one attack and you may move an additional d6 inches per turn, so you basically get a free run move, and uh, that costs 15 points. And then back here in spawn is the ever popular Juggernaut, giving up plus one toughness and plus one wound for 20 points. Now, I would preferably have designated this with different colored dice, but um, I'm on limited resources here. I don't have all the terrain that um, Kieran and the guys at the shop have. So you also need to set up zombie spawn areas, so I'm going to use this area here, this area here and this little cubby hole area here so as we can have a look at where the zombies are coming in they can only come in in rooms where the survivors are actually able to go so there's no point you can't spawn them in here while this door is locked or that door is locked because there's no point the zombies can't get to them um, there are other things you can set up things like um, traps and more perks and more doors war weapons but for this game I've kept it as simple as I possibly can uh, I don't know how well I'll do because um, I haven't actually tried it with this rule set yet. We're still in the work in progress phase. The last thing that happens is the survivors are placed within 12 inches of the middle, which obviously is a very small area, and then you spawn how many zombies you want. So zombies, um, every five rounds is known as a set, and for every set you go through, there's a number of zombies increases. So for the first five rounds, I will roll 1d6 and add the set number multiplied by the number of players. So in, for the first five rounds because I have four survivors I will have d6 plus four zombies so I will have ten zombies in wave one now you might think it should increase every wave but and it should but I can't control that without having a set number that's proportional and we're still working on that so we might still be working on changing that but if I do keep playing to round six I will roll 2d6 and add eight round 11 3d6 plus 12 and so on just making it harder and harder and harder as the game goes on for the survivors, but I won't be playing for that long because I'm just hoping to get across the board and show you what's going on. So, I'm going to get some zombies, or models to represent the zombies, set them up, and then play. Let's play 40k zombies, folks. The zombies are coming. Now, I've only deployed five of them because um, I didn't really have as much space as I would have wanted. The other five are here, and when one zombie dies, I will spawn another one in in the same area or at least within the spawn area, the zombies break out. So the survivors will take first turn, um, because that's sort of how it goes. Survivors get that free few seconds to run around before the game starts, and that means they'll get a chance to have a shot. So every survivor has what we call action points, which is a similar system to Space Hulk, in that they have a certain amount of things they can do in a turn, because one move and one shooting and one assault is probably not enough in these scenarios. So every survivor has five action points and can spend up to two on movement and two on shooting. So I'm going to start by moving, actually I'm just going to move this to one side so as the survivors can, the zombies can come through. I'm going to move all my characters into a good shooting position 
for one action point. And then I'm going to start shooting at the zombies. Now, every survivor gets two AP to spend on shooting. So I'm going to take two shots with each character, and I'll go through from left to right. I'm only going to take a couple of dice because I won't need loads, at least not for these first few rounds. So from left to right, my Commissar model is firing two shots with his last pistol, so spending both AP to fire at this zombie here. And he's hitting on threes, so I'm going to roll them individually just in case he kills it the first time. He missed, so his second action point is spent, and that hits. It wounds on a four, because, oh, yeah, I didn't think that through. Wounds on a four, and that's a wound. Now, zombies have one wound, a six plus armor save, toughness three, and a six plus feel no pain. So I have a six plus armor save, and then a six plus feel no pain save. I make neither, so this zombie is killed. Bye bye, zombie. And that means that my Commissar will score one point. One thing I will note, if you're playing this on your own or as a pair, I recommend you have a spreadsheet or some or a, a good piece of paper that you can keep scribbling out of in order to keep track of what your survivors are doing, because every survivor scores individually. And zombies also score points in a way. So next up is my Sergeant, and he will fire one shot at the Orc boy at the front. And he misses, so his second shot... It hits, and wounds on a 4, and wounds, and the zombie has a 6 up, followed by a 6 up. Fails his armor save, and fails his pain save, so this zombie is removed. So long. And he will now score 1 point. It's 1 point for a kill, 2 points for a melee kill, seeing as it's more dangerous, and 3 points for a headshot, which I will uh, explain if that comes up. So my Talar is going to fire at the Gene Stealer zombie. And he misses on the first shot as well. And then hits. And he needs a 4 plus to wound. That is a wound. I seem to be rolling the same dice all the time. I have no idea why. So 6 up. And then a 6 up. So he, so he makes it. And so that zombie survives being shot at. So now my um, Samurai-like model, my Takio, is going to fire his shots. And he hits the first time, and he does not wound. Second shot, he does not hit. So neither of these two guys scored a point in their turn. So keep track of that if you can. Right, and I'm going to spawn two more zombies in. They can't do anything this turn, so I'll do that in a moment. So these zombies are, well, it looks like there's nothing there. They're in behind a barricade type thing, or like they're in the terrain, and they've got to break through. So on a 3+, plus. A hull point is removed from that barricade. And the barricade has three hull points. Once it's broken, the zombies can move through. So, first zombie breaks it. Second one breaks it. And the third one also breaks it. So that barricade is basically destroyed. And the zombies have scored three points. One for each hull point removed. It's very difficult as a zombie player to score um, just off killing survivors. So you can score points for removing whole points from barricades. Survivors can also gain points by rebuilding them. So those zombies cannot do anything else for the rest of the turn, but are free to move through next turn. This would be a good time for me to spawn two more zombies in. So one, and two. Two more zombies spawned in, and now I'm going to use a grenade. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to back my characters up, because I know now that the zombies are coming through and might just attack me. So I'm going to back all of my characters up. And then they're going to throw some grenades at the zombies. So I'm just going to get my scatter dice. Okay. So I have my scatter dice, 2d6, and a small blast. Actually, I'm going to reduce it to D6, because this is quite a small map. So, my Commissar is going to fire his first grenade. Now, I'm only allowed to fire one grenade and then one shot. I can throw both, but I'm not going to. So, I'm going to place the template. And how am I going to do this? So, that's gone five inches to the left off of this guy. And take away BS4, it's just going to move one inch. So, it hits two zombies. And obviously a frag grenade, which is, I believe, strength 3 AB6, so 4 up to wound. 
So that is a wound, and the zombie now has to take a 6 up, feel no pain, because it's AP6, ignores his armor, and he makes it. So that zombie survives. And he's going to fire one shot with his pistol, with his second action point, and he misses completely. Now what should have happened is that those zombies got blown up, but that didn't happen. So now my sergeant's going to have a go. Now this might look quite boring, because it's just me rolling dice, but it's quite fun when it's um, two or three of you actually doing it. Rest assured, right. Can I do that? I can do that. Sweet. So place it there. Let's scatter. And it scatters six inches minus four. That's two. So that's about so that much and a bit. So that just catches the gene stealer, wounding him on a four. That is a wound. And a six plus feel no pain. And that is a five. So the gene stealer dies. Bye bye, Gene Stealer. Um, if once the zombies come through, I'll explain their sort of melee capabilities, but I'm just gonna finish shooting. So pistol from the same guy. Hits, wounds on a four, no wounds. Okay. So now my Talon guy is going to throw his. And I'll just line it up a little better. There we go. And he's gonna place it there, just over this guy. And it scatters back six inches, so two inches. It's about yay much and a bit that just catches one guy. I know I'm doing this by guesswork, but it's close enough. Four up to wound. That's a wound. And a six plus feel no pain. And he makes it. And then he's going to shoot with his pistol. And he misses also with a one. That's pretty poor. Final guy, my um, right hand guy over here, I can't really keep my iPad still on there, so scatter dice, place it on the orc, and that's a direct hit, which hits all four, because I've deployed them pretty badly, but it just shows the effectiveness of the grenades, so it's a four plus to wound, so that's two wounds on the zombies, now I haven't allocated them individually because they're all the same model, six plus save, and that's one save and one death, so one more zombie dies. That didn't quite go so well. And then one pistol shot, which hits on a four. And my hand is really throwing the camera out of focus while I'm doing this. Four plus to wound. Yeah, roll that again. That is a one. So no wounds there. Um, I'm going to spend my second action point again, just moving back a little bit. Now I should do that as a... So your second action point spent on movement is actually a d6, but... It was just easier to do it like that in that case, because I was only going a short distance anyway. Right, so now things can actually happen and fun can begin. And I'm in a really bad position. So every zombie acts individually, but you can group them into individual units or squads of two or three. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to keep each one individual. So this front guy moves d6 inches, he can move five. That's a that's about five, maybe a bit more. This guy here, the orc, moves two inches. So he just comes to here. And he's just fallen over. And the guardsman at the back also moves two, comes down to the bottom of the terrain. Zombies can then assault D6 if they are in range, which this guy is. So he's going to ascend to assault the nearest survivor, which is him, I think. And he gets a four, so he makes it, I would say. Now my survivor gets to fire one overwatch shot with his pistol, and he hits, wounds on a four, and he does not wound. Um, I'm not going to do any supporting fire shenanigans, but there is a supporting fire option if you wish. I just want to show the melee abilities here. So a survivor is weapon skill three, as I mentioned, with one attack, a pistol and close combat weapon, so he'll have two attacks at weapon skill three. Zombies are weapon skill two, strength three, um, BS naught, toughness three, one wound, initiative one with two attacks, two close combat weapons, and fearless. And a six will save, as I've already mentioned. So, survivor hits on a three. Two hits, needing a four to wound. Two wounds, ooh. And six up saves, one save already, feel no pain. No. So, the zombie dies. And my character scores 
two points because a melee kill is worth two, which allows you to be a bit more gung ho if you are really needing to rack some points up. And now I spawn in uh, the remaining three zombies, seen as that brings me back to five, and that guy's fallen over again. That's annoying. Two and three. Okay. So by my maths, my character has unlocked five points, so he's going to move to the door, pay his five points, and open the door. So that's two of his action points gone, and my other characters are also going to move around to get into a decent position. Now when you're playing on your own, it's quite easy to use your survivors quite methodically and work together, but when you're playing with friends, it can be quite interesting to talk about where everybody's going to move. It's quite interesting to plan your tactics out. So now I'm going to move to shooting. Now you can move, shoot, and do everything in any order you like. I'm just moving and then shooting because that's what I prefer to do. So I'm not going to throw any grenades. So my left hand man has single shot, three plus to hit, and he hits, four plus to wound. That is not a wound. Second shot, hits, and wounds. Now this is a six to wound. A six to wound with a normal shot, not grenades or anything, is a headshot, which means it will score three points if the zombie does not save it. So six plus save, no. Six plus feel no pain. That's a cock dice, I think. Nope, by the mark of Dave, that was not... I think I'm going to re-roll it anyway. Dice on the floor. It's a five. For anyone who needs an easy reference, it was a five. So that zombie is killed. And my character scores three points. This is why you need something to keep track of what every survivor is doing and why it's helpful to have a lot of players so everyone keeps track of themselves. Or you can do it as a games master type system. So my next guy is going to shoot at... Um, the orc at the back because these guys are slightly further back and might not be in range. So one shot, misses, second shot, hits and four to wound, does not wound. That was a failure. So now this guy is going to shoot at that orc as well, hits and wounds. Zombie has a six up, followed by another six up, so he dies. Not a six to wound, so He's just dead. Now I'll have to move them out of there for the next wave in a moment once this is done. But anyway, so last guy, gonna fire at this one. First shot, misses. Wow, I can't roll dice. Second shot, hits, four plus to wound, no wounds. That's very disappointing. Um, I'm then gonna run my guys through, just do it quickly. Just scuttle around the corner and head for the box. That's a three, so that's a little bit less. And that's also a three, so those two stick together. Okay, so zombies. So I'm going to keep them individual. So this guy moves d6, just three inches, about that much, is it? Yeah, it's about that much. Second guy, the archer, moves three inches. And the last guy, the guardsman, moves a full six, so one and two. That puts him about there. So you can see, at least with this setup on small boards with lots of cramped rooms, the zombies can really close the dif distance quickly and put the pressure on if you're not ready for them. So this guy is... is every, who's in six inches? Let me check. So the closest survivor to this one is this guy. So he's going to attempt to assault him. And he does. He's a very fast one. Skadoosh. He's going to fire overwatch. And he misses. This guy's going to attempt to charge this guy. And he makes it. And this zombie I'm going to keep back. I don't think he can make it. Can he? No. I, he's just short in my opinion. So he's just going to have to wait back there. Now you're resolving whichever order you prefer. But I'm going to go from right to left. So this guy has two attacks. Hitting on threes. Because weapon skill three versus two. And that's one hit. And then a four plus to wound. No wounds. Oh dear. So the zombie gets three attacks back. Two basic plus close combat weapons. Um, or is it? No. They have one attack basic. Plus one for charging. Plus one for two melee weapons. Sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, hitting on fours. One hit. Wounding on a four. That's a wound. So my survivor has a four plus armor save. 
and he makes it. He's fine. Now, he's going to then take an initiative test, so on initiative three, so three down he escapes. That's a two, so he escapes and consolidates d6. Just one inch away. Just allows him to shoot again. If he'd have failed, he would have been stuck in melee. So now here, so this guy has two attacks. And he misses with both, that's a whiff. And the zombie has three attacks. Hits twice, wounds on a four. One wound, four plus armor save. And he makes it, he's all right. And now he gets to, he fails his initiative test, so he does not get away and he is locked in combat with that zombie. His friends can charge, but they cannot shoot at the zombie while he's in melee, which is why the evade rule is so important. So, in the survivor turn, now, I probably don't have the points to do it, but I want to show you how the mystery box works. So I'm going to move this guy to the mystery box and spend an action point, and I roll 3d6. This table has been edited several times, but 3d6, and I get da -da -da -da, 1, 4, 4 makes a 9. So I'm going to go and consult my mystery box table. Um, it's here, and hopefully you will see that number 9 is a plasma pistol. So my character is now equipped with a plasma pistol as well as his las pistol. Now, each survivor harries two weapons, and if you buy the mule kick perk, which I've included in the game, you can carry three. So he's got a plasma pistol, a las pistol, and his close combat weapon. You are allowed to swap your last pistol later on in the game, and I'm just going to run him back forward towards the zombies, three inches. There we go. So that's how the mystery box works. There are some really cool weapons in here, but um, we'll save those for actual games where I actually managed to get the 3D6 needed, because they are the very difficult weapons to get. Like, actually no, 13 is not too difficult, but maybe. So, so because I can't actually shoot this zombie... I'm going to move this guy into a position to... This survivor's now moved to here. Um, my, my memory just died for a moment there, so I'll fix that issue. And he's going to shoot at this zombie. Two shots. First shot missed. Second shot hits. And does not wound. Typical. This guy's now going to shoot at this one. And he hits with his first shot and wounds. Six up save. And the feel no pain. Oh, he makes it. That's annoying. So, second shot. Now, you can roll these both at the same time, but I'm doing them individually. So, as you can just see how it works. And just in case... Um, and that's a kill. But you can split your shot so that you might kill with your first one, and then it's a waste of time shooting at that zombie again. But anyway, that's that zombie killed. One point to him. Woo! -hoo. So, this zombie... He's going to attempt to charge him, and it's a normal charge. 2d6. Now, you might think why the survivors can charge so much when the zombies basically can't. It's just because if you make the zombie charges like 2d6, then it just breaks the game. Because these cramped corridors, d6 in charge is more than enough. These 2d6 is just arbitrary for the survivors. I, I might have even reduced it slightly. Anyway, to melee. This one here, I have three attacks because I charged. Hitting on threes, and that's gone on the floor. And that's two hits. Wounding on a four, and that is a wound. That's not saved, and that is not saved. He died. Okay, I'm going to do that again, because my memory died again. So, one hit. Hang on, I only have two attacks, I didn't charge. One hit, and no wounds. Zombie two attacks, and that's two hits, and... This time for sure. So, no wounds. Um, I am not going to evade because um, otherwise I'm going to have a problem. Now, the one thing I didn't say when I pulled that plasma pistol out of the box is that all weapons except your starting pistol have ammo. They will run out of ammo. Now, a plasma pistol has, I think it's 15 or is it 20 shots? I'll check. It's just on here. A plasma pistol has 15 shots. That's not bad. So, when 15 shots is up, that weapon cannot be fired anymore. But, we're not going to get that far. So, in the zombies turn, there are no zombies left, so it's just going to be continuing with this melee. So, Survivor. Hits once. Does not wound. This is getting repetitive. Zombie has two attacks. Hits once. And does wound. And... 
He makes his save. This is getting. Yes. Dad's at the door. So, uh, I know this is going to get quite repetitive, but I'm going to evade. And I do. So I consolidate d6, and I move away five inches. Bye. Now, I would go for a second round, but I'm just going to kill this zombie, and then we'll call it quits, just so that you've had a look at the game. So I'm going to move in my plasma pistol, and I'm going to shoot it. So first shot, hits, and wounds. Now, because it shrinks seven, toughness three, AP two, ignores feel no pain. Wapow! Wave one clear. Now, I know that looked... So that was 40k zombies, in a nutshell. That was wave one. In wave two, there would have been, if we had enough memory to do it, only five. Now, I know the system is seven. That I know the system is a bit flawed in that regard. But that was a taster for 40k zombies. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you um, enjoyed the game. If you want to play it for yourself, be sure to go down into the description, just down there, and there'll be a link to the Bell of Lost Souls thread that I started um, with the rules in there and this state so as you can use them, test them, and then come back to me in either in the comments or on that thread, suggest any changes that you So yeah, there will be a link in the description. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with everybody. Um, if you want to share it on Twitter, use the hashtag 40kzombies. That way we can actually get a proper conversation going if you want to do that. Thank you for watching this video. Um, my name is Michael for Tatsky Imperialis. I look forward to speaking to you about this game, and I will see you again.